was a 70-year-old woman with a skin nodule on the thigh. And we've got a nice large excision here all the way down through the subcutis down to the fascia level. And there is a myxoid, bluish myxoid nodule, or a couple nodules here in the deep dermis and subcutis. And the other thing that stands out to me is that the, the septa between, you can see the fat lobules, usually the, the septa between lobules is very thin, delicate, but here, like kind of like, like this, right? Little thin strands of collagen around each lobule of fat. But here the lobules, are, the septa are thicker, and we'll come back to that in a minute. But let's look in here. So one thing you think is is a hypocellular, not, it's not very cellular, and it's myxoid. So you can always, the first thought is, could it be a myxoma when you see something that is hypocellular and myxoid? But when we go closer, even though the cellularity is not high, there is definitely atypia here. Very hyperchromatic pleomorphic cells scattered here in the midst of this myxoid background. And over here, there's some more. This area gets a little bit more cellular, but look, very ugly cells, very hyperchromatic. Some of them are multinucleated, and they have this myxoid background. And then there are sometimes some kind of prominent elongated blood vessels. They're not really dramatic in this case. All right. And then so this is a uh, extremity of an elderly patient. And so when we see this myxoid tumor with hyperchromatic atypical cells, and it's infiltrating into the subcutis um, or the, in the dermis on the elderly patient on the extremity. This is a classic example of myxofibrosarcoma. And based on this, when they're really low cellularity like this, uh, the, when the cellularity is very low, um, this is a grade one myxofibrosarcoma or a low grade myxofibrosarcoma, although I don't like to call them that way because it sounds a lot like another tumor, low grade fibromyxoid sarcoma. The names are very, very similar. So I intentionally call this myxofibrosarcoma, comma, grade one, or comma, low grade, to make it sound different from that other tumor that is has a, a very frustratingly similar name. So this is an important tumor to know about because at, you know all sarcomas are rare, but as, um, as sarcomas go, this one is relatively common form of sarcoma. Um, so I, I see these regularly, like, you know, uh, you know, on a, on a regular basis, many times per year, I see myxofiber sarcomas. There's some other sarcomas I've seen, like, a couple of in my whole career, you know. So, but this is one that we see regularly, and they are commonly in older adults and on the extremities is the most common site to see them. The other reason they're important, particularly uh, for any dermatopathologist watching this and dermatologists, is because they often arise above the fascia in the dermis or subcutis. And sometimes they are only, like this case, are limited to, to the, the dermis and subcutis without any deeper involvement. Other times they're, they're down in the deep soft tissue, but they, they are a, a sarcoma that commonly involves the skin. And because of that, they can sometimes get mistaken as a cyst, just like almost any nodule in the, the skin can look like a cyst clinically and look like a skin colored bump. I've seen all sorts of different sarcomas that have been clinically thought to represent cyst until they were biopsied. And um, so in any case, though, it's important to know because they are, they are superficial, they, they often get picked up and detected by dermatologists or other doctors who, who may think that they are, are something else because they're, uh, they're just presenting as a nodule in the skin. And the other thing is that they often extend far beyond where the tumor appears to end. So clinically, it might have felt like a nodule here. So they went out and did a wide margin around it. But look what happens. The tumor cells ooze out of these myxoid nodules and they extend and trickle along the fibrous septa of the subcutis and they do the same thing along the fascia or if they're down in the muscle in between the muscle bundles they are very infiltrative and look there's still tumor cells here very atypical and watch we keep following it keep following it still tumor cells and we keep going and keep going and this tumor even though they did a very wide margin the tumor cells go all the way out to the inked peripheral margin, like miles away from the original mass. So these tumors often extend very far beyond what they appear to be clinically. And because of that, it's really hard to get negative margins on them sometimes. And I know that my, my sarcoma surgery colleagues that I've worked with 
um, they often, you know, are really frustrated by these tumors because they'll do such an, a big excision and still end up with positive margins. And which, you know, obviously, if you don't get that under control, they have a much higher chance of local recurrence because of how infiltrative they are. And this is another, this is an unusual tumor for a variety of reasons compared to other sarcomas. And this is one of the reasons that many sarcomas grow quickly and make a, like a ball of tumor, a sphere that pushes everything out of the way and are not very infiltrative. But myxofibrous sarcoma is a notable exception that is usually infiltrative at the edges and not well circumscribed. So many other sarcomas are usually pretty circumscribed, but not myxofibrous sarcoma. So this is, like I said, I would call this grade one. And when they become more cellular um, and start having clumping of cells around vessels, they become either grade two. And, and then grade three usually have solid sheet-like areas that look like other high-grade sarcomas look like undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, but then you'll have other foci that have myxoid. And I, if you're watching this online, I have a full video about myxofibrous sarcoma, um, and I'll put a link uh, down below, and you can check that out. So anyway, myxofibrous sarcoma, grade one. And these are tumors that really, immunostains, you could do, you know, you could do a few immunostains to rule out other possibilities, but these really are pretty much uh, an H&E diagnosis. I usually do include, like, in if there's a, particularly if there's solid cellular areas, I may include an S100 to, to rule out very rare, there are very rare cases of melanoma that can have myxoid change, but I mean, they, usually this is a diagnosis made on, on H&E mostly. And um, there's not much else that looks quite like this. Um, I have seen, uh, I've seen a pleomorphic rhabdomyosarcoma once that had some myxoid areas that looked very much like myxofibrous sarcoma. And there are some, uh, some other forms of liposarcoma, like pleomorphic liposarcoma, can have areas that look like this, but then it will have other areas with obvious lipoblasts. But there's no specific marker that we can do by molecular or immunohistochemistry to prove this diagnosis. These are, have random chromosomal abnormalities and no specific immunohistochemical findings. All right, so that's myxofibrosarcoma, grade one.